Hey everybody, this video should be short and sweet. We're about to dive into the book of Job. Now, I will be uh, making a Bible study on this book, and it will be available for free at my website via PDF. Uh, all I ask in return is for just a few of you, if you could, to help me edit it. Spelling errors, grammatical errors, and, um, and that's about it www.gleaningthescriptures.com is the website. There is currently a um, Bible study on Leviticus that is available there for you to download. If you have any issues with downloading that, you just let me know. So before we dive into the book of Job, I'm going to ask you a question. This question is designed to make you think, because we're going to be looking at the book of Job from what is most likely a fresh, new perspective, maybe a more proper perspective. We're going to look at how Job is introduced to us by God. We'll start by looking at verse 1 in chapter 1, and then verse what I believe is 22 in chapter 1. So let's do that now. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. Okay, so there's our first verse, and here's a question. When we look at the book of Job as Christians in America right now during this time, how often do we describe Job using the words blameless, upright, one who feared God, and shunned evil? Think about that. And then verse 22, In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. God has nothing negative to say about Job. And then when Satan comes along to try to destroy Job, he has nothing negative to say about Job. In fact, out of all the people on planet Earth, Job is the one that God points at and says, Hey, Satan, have you, have you considered this man? Then Job is put under some extreme pressure, some extreme stress, and extreme emotional torment and misery. Everything he had ever worked for from the day of his birth was taken from him in one day. And then he sat and gave himself time to process all of this. And did he crack under the pressure? This isn't something that we have to wonder about or even read between the lines. It's quite clear. In all this, Job did not sin, nor charge God with wrong. So I pose this question again. When you're studying the book of Job or talking about Job, when your leaders are studying the book of Job and talking about Job, when other Christians are studying the book of Job or talking about Job, how often do they describe Job in a way that lines up with the way that God describes Job? My friends, we're living in the latter days, and it's a promise. The things that are evil will be called good, and the things that are good will be called evil. Consider this in your meditation. And I look forward to diving into this book of Job in a correct way. Remember... Scripture is good for reproof, for doctrine, for instruction in righteousness, for correction. If we were all right all the time, none of us say we're right all the time. Then we wouldn't need correction. You know that you're not right all the time, so don't fight against correction. It's good. It's not evil. Embrace it. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Shalom. Thank you for watching this video. If you thought it was neat, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not? And if you like this video so darn much that you want to share it with your friends, there should be a button down below somewhere that says share, and you can copy it and text it to anybody that you'd like, that you think might enjoy being strengthened by God, our Creator. There should be a few videos popped up on the screen by now, and if you'd like to watch another quick video, easy to digest, filled with love and creative knowledge from the scriptures, 
go ahead and click on one of those videos. It really helps the channel out a lot. Thanks and enjoy. Shalom.